Although Astro just recently got its first stable release, there has been a lot of talk about it in the last year. It has gone from an empty repo to over 18,000 GitHub stars and 30,000 early users in the last 16 months. It has been deployed by companies like Google, Trivago, The Guardian and IKEA. Obviously there is something good if not great about Astro, so let's check it out and see what all the fuss is about. Astro is an all-in-one web framework for building fast, content-focused websites. This does not tell us much, so we will have to dig deeper. On the first glance, Astro looks like a static site generator, and technically it is that, but it also has some features that makes it more than just a static site generator. So let's talk a little bit about Astro's key features to get a better understanding of what Astro does that's gotten it so much attention in the last few months. Key feature of Astro is that it uses Islands architecture aka component islands. Astro ships with zero JavaScript by default, making sites created in Astro super fast because it means that it serves only static pages to the user without any JS, which is well the fastest way possible to serve a web page. Now that is great if you are building fully static site, but chances are you are not and your site is going to need some of that JavaScript goodness for user interactions. That is where Islands architecture comes in. With Astro you can easily create islands of interactivity inside of your mainly static web page and Astro is going to ship just those small parts of JavaScript to the client either on page load or if it's further down the page you can set it to load that JavaScript when the interactive island or component is visible. Another feature of Astro is that you can use pretty much any UI framework or library you like with it for creating your components. You can even mix and match web frameworks if you're some kind of monster and have no regards for consistency. But you know, if that's your thing, you can do it. Astro officially supports React, Preact, Svelte, Vue, Sol.js, Alpine.js and Lit. But you also have third-party integrations for custom elements, Angular and even PHP. Astro is a multi-page application framework which means that it's similar to something like Ruby on Rails, Laravel or WordPress in the way it serves pages to the user. Those pages are usually rendered on the server. However, traditional MPA frameworks would have you write different languages on the server and JavaScript in the browser. In Astro you are always just writing JavaScript, HTML and CSS. That way you can render your UI components like React and Svelte on both the server and the client. The result is a developer experience that feels a lot like Next.js and other modern web frameworks, but with performance characteristics of a more traditional MPA site architecture. You need to keep this in mind when choosing Astro as your framework of choice, because if you are building something like an application dashboard with a lot of shared state between pages and user interaction actions and don't care about the SEO, then Astro will not be a good fit for this use case. But it's a great solution for traditional websites that are content focused and depend on speed and great SEO, with some user interactions sprinkled in. Since Astro can communicate with the server, that means that you don't have to just deploy static sites, but you can use Astro as a server-side rendering framework. You can do this using adapters. Astro supports Cloudflare, Dino, Netlify, Node.js and Vercel at the time of making this video, with more adapters to come later. And let's not forget that even though Astro is a relatively new project, it already has a great community with over 5000 developers and over 100 integrations. Ok, so now that we have a general idea of what Astro is, let's install it and try to build something with it. The easiest way to install Astro is to do it through Setup Wizard by just running yarn create Astro. The only prerequisite is to have Node 14, 18 and up or 16, 12 and up installed on your machine. Astro will ask you for the folder where you want to install your app, I will call mine Astro Movies. Then you are able to choose a template, I will go with basics and recommended one. After that Astro can install all the dependencies for you if you like. I will choose yes, initialize new git repository yes, you can now choose if you want to use typescript and how strict it should be.
I don't usually use TypeScript for these demos, so I will choose I prefer not to use TypeScript. And now, even though we didn't use TypeScript, we are going to get a message that says Astro supports TypeScript inside of Astro component scripts, so we still need to create some TypeScript related files in your project. You can safely ignore these files, but don't delete them. Okay, great, so Astro is installed. Now, before we take a look at the project structure, I just wanna install two more integrations, Tailwind for styling and React for our framework components. Let's see the into Astro movies and run yarn Astro add Tailwind. This will automatically install Tailwind and add it to the Astro config MJS file and create minimal Tailwind config.cgs file for you. To install React, you can just do yarn astro add react and astro cli will configure everything automatically for you. To work with astro, it's best to use VS Code by using official VS Code extension, but you also have community support for Nova Editor, Vim and NeoVim. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, there is no real plugin for JetBrains IDEs like WebStorm or PHPStorm, which I'm using. However, there is a workaround that will at least give you some code highlighting in the JetBrains IDEs. You can follow the instructions in the comment on JetBrains issues page, the link will be in the description below. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at Astro default project structure. Astro's project structure is pretty basic and if you used React, Vue, Next.js, etc., this will all look very familiar to you. There is a public folder for your images and other assets, SRC with components, layouts and pages. These are all pretty self-explanatory, especially if you use Next.js, since Astro also has file-based routing just like Next. So all of your routes are defined as files inside pages folder. Main building blocks of Astro app are Astro components. And I don't just mean components in the components folder, but every file that has an Astro extension is an Astro component. Component structure is a mix of JSX, HTML, view components, markdown files with front matter, but also somehow manages to be its own thing. There is a lot of things that you need to be aware about these components and it would take a whole video just to cover all the ins and outs of Astro components because they seem really powerful. I will cover only basics here and you can learn the rest from the docs, which shouldn't be a problem since Astro docs are one of the best that I've seen in a while. And you really should read them if you plan to use this framework. Astro component is composed of three main parts. JavaScript part, where you write your JavaScript code. Here you can import other components, components written in other frameworks, helper functions. You can write your own logic, define local variables, define props for your component, and so on. So all your JavaScript goes here. This code is written inside code fences, similar to front matter in markdown files. You need to keep in mind that Astro components render to HTML during build, even if you run JavaScript code inside of your components, it will all run ahead of time, stripped from the final page that you sent to your users. There are ways to run code as is if you need it, but you can read about that in the docs. Component template comes below the script part of the component. You can write plain old HTML here. However, Astro's component template syntax also supports JavaScript expressions, imported components, and special Astro directives. You can use JSX-like expressions here, like mapping over an array and displaying its values just like in React, but you need to keep in mind that although you can include dynamic values that are calculated in the script block, once included, these values are not reactive and are not going to change. And finally, you have style block in which you can write your styles. These styles are scoped to the component by default. However, keep in mind that the styles are going to apply only to the content of the component's template. Children and any imported components will not be styled by default. Okay, so now let me show you the difference between Astro components and framework components while fetching data. And I also hope that this demo will make concept of component islands pretty clear. 
I have created a directus project that is going to serve as an API. It only has a few movie items that we are going to display using Astro. Movie consists of title, year, director and poster for the movie and that's it. Now in Astro Movies run yarn dev to start the development server. Open index.astro file inside pages directory. This is our home page. I will remove everything from this file except for layout component and main tag. I will add some Tailwind classes to the main so that our site looks a bit nicer. Ok, so now we've cleaned up our home page. There is nothing to see in the browser since we are not displaying anything, just an empty page. Let's change that. Create moviecard.astro inside component folder. In the front matter we will define props for our component. Remember that although we did not install Astro with TypeScript, Astro components will use TypeScript in front matter regardless. So we can use interface to define types of our props. And then we can destructure those props as variables from astro.props object so that we can easily use them in our template. This component is just going to serve as a card for displaying a movie. So I will just add a bit of HTML and a few Tailwind classes to that HTML and display the variables that we just defined. Nothing too complicated. But in the index.astro file, I will use fetch to get the list of movies. Of course, we do that in the front matter. Now we display those movies in the template using movie card component, just like we would do in React using JSX. Of course, we need to fill in all the props for the movie card. And let's not forget to import movie card component. Great, let's take a look at this inside the browser. Ok, so we are getting list of movies, nice. Now if I go to Directus Administration, change the name of the first movie, save it, go to our site and refresh the page, we can see that the change to the movie title has been reflected on our site. However, this is only in development mode. If I now go to the terminal and build our app using yarn build, wait a bit for it to build, then run yarn preview. This will open up built version of our app on localhost 3000 and it's the closest thing to how your site will behave once you deploy it. Now if you go to direct us again and change the title of the movie back to what it was and then go back to our site, refresh it, now nothing happens. This is because Astro will fetch the latest data only on build time. If you want to see new changes, you will need to build your site again. And if we take a look at this folder and open up index.html file, you can see that this is just a plain static HTML file with all of our movies hard coded in. And this is exactly what makes Astro so fast. This is great, but it's not made for every use case. And if your data changes often, it would be silly to rebuild it every time there is a change. This is where concept of component islands comes into play. Let's now create movielist.jsx component inside components folder. Obviously, this is not an Astro component, but a React component. So when you want to add some interactivity to your page or get the data that changes often, you would use framework components instead of Astro components. This is going to be just a super simple React component that is going to map over movies object and display the titles of our movies from the API. And to get the movies, we are once again going to use fetch method that is available in Astro components as well as in framework components. Unfortunately, we can't use Astro components inside framework components. That is why I'm just displaying the titles of the movies in a div tag for this demo. However, you can use framework components inside Astro components. So let's then go to index.astro and import movie list component and then just display it in the template. There is one super important thing that we need to do still and that is to say how we want to load JavaScript for this component. I want it done on load. So we need to add client load to the component in the template, otherwise this will not work. Check it out in the browser and sure enough we get our list of movies. Great, let's build our site again with yarn build, run yarn preview, open it in the browser. Now if I change 
title of the movie in my director's administration, those changes will be visible for our movie list component since this component is dynamic, but title change will still not be visible for our Astro component. This means that movie list is dynamic island in the sea of static, to put it somewhat poetically. Hopefully this demo shed light on the difference between Astro components, framework component and concept of island architecture. Astro seems very interesting, but at least for now I would just use it for mostly static sites that need some interactivity. I would need to try server-side rendering and see how that works in Astro to make my final conclusion. I also know that some people think that it's problematic that Astro will fully load new pages when the links are clicked, like a traditional website, and it's hard to share state between those full reloads. To me this is not a problem because Astro is a content focused framework and it's not intended to be used like a single page application. There are other tools for that if you need that sort of functionality, although I'm sure that somebody will try to quote unquote fix that problem sooner or later. Of course there are many more Astro concepts that I could cover, if you are interested in that let me know down in the comments. So this has been it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.